this is where we begin to switch from a somewhat hello world-ish posture with regards to the user interface and start to do things that are more substantial in terms of how the user interface comes together. And so, by the end of this segment, we will have not only multiple tabs, but each tab will have a list of headlines relevant to that tab. And so, when we look at where we are now, um, we've built a number of command line programs, but this is a good opportunity to build the newsreader, the user interface, to make sure there are no negative side effects in the program based on what we've done with the libraries and the foundational code. And so we've built it and now let's get a new copy and let's run it and see where we are with the user interface. It's good to have a mental picture of sorts. And so far, everything's good in terms of the build and the download of the, of the executable. The program looks the way we expect. No significant changes there. And so let's take a look at the code for the user interface, or in this case, the main window module. The main window module on line 42 in app underscore win dot cpp has a line of code that has intrigued us through this process. Append notebook append page. And notebook append page is the key piece of code we'll use to create tabs. Now, in our command line program, news download, there is a function um, that we, or there's a parameter called self update. And self update is going to um, be the means by which we develop the user interface because there is a direct relationship between the way self-update works and the way our user interface should work when it starts up. And so the main if clause in this program, in this command line program, basically runs or it interprets the command line parameter self-update as run on automatic. So let's move over to rsswriter.cpp and look at the update rss feeds function listed there. So in the header file we have it defined or we have it declared and in the implementation file writer.cpp we have it defined. And in the definition for update RSS feeds, we see use of the RSS feed data structure. And the RSS feed data structure has two fields of supreme importance, the feed name and the feed URL. And our goal is to use those two fields, take this structure and have a list of them. So it will help to diagram that out, our makeshift digital whiteboarding right here in the source code. So let's say that we had up to six RSS feed instances. And of course, each one has 
these fields that we're interested in, the feed name and the feed URL. And then we're going to create a process where each of those values are unique. So the first value is um, slash dot, and then we got Pharonics, and then we got TechCrunch, tech and, and so on. And what we're going to do with those values is we're going to have a for loop. This for loop is going to essentially allow us to iterate through this list, access each element in the list in sequence, and then extract the values from each element, each instance of the RSS feed structure, and then use the feed name field to assign a name to the tab. And then we call an append page like function or a pin tab like function and pass in this tab name. So conceptually that is our aim with respect to this area of the application. And since we have since we have a process in place in News Download to do this, it makes sense to observe how that process works there and apply that elsewhere. While we're at it, we're going to update our um, we're going to update our program to use get feed names. And before we do that, let's take a look at the SQL query where we we extract this this data. So we run a query and we run a loop um, on the rows that are returned, and we extract the field values and assign those to um, instances of the RSS uh, feed data structure. So what we want to do then is take a look at line 118. That's our namespace alias. We're going to copy that and we're going to paste that into app win, app underscore win. What that'll do for us is that'll allow us to go down the road of making line 42 well, what was line 42, to make it um, move in a direction that's very similar to what we have in this update feeds function. And as we start to um, move over or, or replicate pieces of code, we'll know that the URL that we are getting back, we don't need that. So the codes will look almost identical with the exception that, or at least the starting parts of them, will look the same with the exception that we will not be using a URL at this time for this process. And the rest of this con consists of modifying our call to the append page function so that we're passing in an actual feed name instead of a boilerplate value or a placeholder value. So Let's make a few edits, and then let's send this code up, and then we're going to build it. And so we have scripts in place that we've defined previously, where we're going to send up the source code to the build server, switch to the build server, build the code, get the resultant executable, and run the resultant executable to see where we're at. But before we can do that, we need to correct a number of errors related to missing headers. So we'll fix that, and at the same time, we'll reorder the code so that the sequence is more correct than it appeared to be. And then 
with that in place, we're going to send it up again, build it, and see what the result is. We definitely need our database name, so that was an omission. And we're going to resequence this so that the code flows uh, a little better. And then once we have our new batch of code up on the build server, we're going to build it. And this time, um, we need to change out our writer.hpp file um, that we're referencing on line 16 and swap that out with reader.hpp because reader is the module that contains the function called get feed names which is the function principal function that we need for this process and once we build this we'll be in a position to test it out and see how things work at this stage. And we have multiple tabs corresponding to our feeds. Unfortunately the tabs are frozen and it's frozen because GTK has its own error checking built into it when you don't meet the full requirements of the GTK interfaces the GTK UI will simply stall in some cases. And so in this case, um, the user interface remained responsive and we were able to move the window around. So that's actually a plus. It's better than I've seen in other user interface toolkits. So I'm well pleased with that. But at the same time, we do want to get the user interface functioning. So the way to do that is to recognize that although we were able to generate multiple tabs, we did not create unique content for those tabs. So when a given tab was clicked, and in this case, when the first tab, when we attempted to click the, uh, any of those other tabs, the uh, GTK system was able to detect that there was no associated content there. So what that means is instead of that single list box that was floating outside of the loop, we need to bring that list box uh, code into the loop itself. So that means that as each loop iteration executes, there will be a single list box instance for that tab generated in that iteration of the loop. And therefore, we will be able to um, inject the relevant headlines that go with that. So let's see if that's the case. We'll run the program and see if we have movement on these tabs. And there we are. The content looks exactly the same because we merely um, reuse the same list box definition. But now we want to bring a little more reality into this process and attempt to have headlines that actually match up with the feed names indicated by the tab. To do that we not only have to do a little bit more shuffling but we have to introduce some additional elements and so we'll need a inner loop in which we retrieve the headlines for the feed and then as we iterate through the list of headlines we're going to add each headline encountered from the sequence from the sequence of headlines to the list box instance that we set up for that overall iteration and then once that is complete we can then associate that list box with the tab that's been generated and at that point we are in good shape and 
this for loop will not be a C++ style range. It's not going to be a C++ range for loop where it automatically deduces the next element in the sequence. We're actually going to use a numeric sequence and base the loop condition on um, the, the, a numeric value in relation to a upper range. And so the headlines um, list is a vector and it contains a size um, function that will bring back the number of elements and we can use that as our upper bound. And so we'll start from zero since the vector is indexed at zero. And we'll use the at function off of the vector to ensure, just a double insurance, to ensure that we stay within the bounds. Because staying within bounds, whatever performance hit that may be, is more important than having high performance but exceeding bounds and creating a potential security hole. So we are um, pulling back the, the text value for the headline. And we're going to use that to form a GTK label. And that label will then be added into the list box at a certain position. So let's build this and let's see what the result is. So let's send up the code to the build server. We built it and our command line tools are working so well for us that we are, our command line scripts, that we are, we're now in a real Zen flow in terms of getting code moved back and forth and compiled. And we do have headlines. They're unique to each tab. And we're now on the right track in terms of our development. We have definitely moved beyond Hello World. And we're somewhere in the vicinity of Hello Atmosphere. And With this, we need to make some adjustments because I don't know about you, but having um, that data centered like that, while it's very symmetrical and beautiful in some ways, it's not what we are accustomed to in terms of the layout of uh, text information. And so we're going to align the, uh, the data to the, to the left. And so GTK provides a function where you can align a given widget based on a flag you pass in and in this case the flag that we're interested in is the um, align start flag which will give us a left a left side alignment and so let's build that let's run and let's see how far we have come Good work team, good work. So, there we are, we're now ready to proceed to the next step.